Hi everybody, Steve Muse here. I'm here to show you how to jumpstart your RV battery. But first of all, you gotta see what's going on. Why is this battery dead? First, it's an old battery. It's been here a long time, it's expired. Let's go inside the bus and let's see what's going on to see what kind of voltage we're getting. Okay, well clearly, when I turn this on, it's making all kinds of noises and stuff because it's, it's a low battery. I'll try starting it. Okay, you can clearly see I've got no power. Okay, what we're going to do here is we're going to move the assisting vehicle nice and close to the motorhome. Not too close. You want to make sure you've got some pathway here to walk and that your distance is not longer than the jumper cables you're going to get. So, let's get those jumper cables. Okay, what we have here is a standard set of jumper cables. They're usually kept in your car here and there's two ends, obviously. Uh, one's black and one's red. The red is the positive and the black is the negative. Let me show you how that corresponds on, on the actual vehicles. Okay, so what we have here is the positive terminal and the negative terminal. They're easily identified by, usually they're red and black, as, I, as you saw on the cables. They're also indicated on the battery as a plus and a minus, and some say pause and neg on them. Make sure that you identify with those so you don't mix them up. We want the red on the red and the black on the black. Okay, so what we have here is the assisting vehicle. This is a Jeep. This is the negative terminal. This is the positive terminal. There's a little positive mark on both. It's on the battery. It's very hard to see. And the negative is over here. You can see the red going into it. it indicates the positive side. So let's set our cables up. Just want to make note that we have one end of the cables in our hand. The other hand, other end, we put on the ground and keep them separated. We don't want these ends touching. Okay, so we're back on the dead vehicle, and it's very important we get a good connection. So we're going to take the positive lead, the red end, we're going to put it on the positive end of the battery. Then we're going to put the negative end on the negative side of the terminal. Okay, we want to make sure we've got a good grip on that sucker right there, nice and tight. I can't emphasize enough how to make sure that you have a good solid connection on top of these terminals, okay? These things can omit some gas and we don't want sparks, we don't have any fire. So the best thing to do is to have a very good solid connection. As I said, this is the dead battery. Now we're gonna make a connection on the good battery. So we're gonna start with the positive side first. So we're gonna make sure that we got a good solid connection on the positive side. And boy, that's, that's really nice and tight. Then we're gonna put it on to the ground on the good battery, okay? Just like that. So we want to start the good vehicle now. And I think we want to let it run for a little while to help charge up that battery that was over on the uh, dead RV battery. We want to do this so we can start putting a charge back into that other battery before we try starting the bus. Because this is obviously a smaller battery than the battery that we're charging. But we are getting amperage charging that other battery. Okay, it's also very important that when we have these cables set up, that your cables are away from all the fans and moving parts. I forgot to mention that between the two. This is especially true if you're jumping another vehicle that has the whole engine assembly sitting right in front of you. Make sure your cables are away from the engine. This is the way it should look right here. Okay, so we're going to try starting the vehicle right now. Just waiting for my weight to start and we'll start. It didn't start right away. That's because we don't have enough juice built up into the dead battery. So we're going to let it run for about 10 more minutes here and increase the voltage. Okay, so now we're going to start the engine. We'll wait for the wait to start light to go out. And we'll give it a shot. Voila. We are now charged. So the proper procedure to remove the cables is we go to the dead battery, which is now running, and we take the cable lead off the negative first. Then we take the positive side off, and we keep them separated. So we want them apart just like that. Now this is a good time to take the uh, 
turn the ignition off now so that we've got no moving parts when we go to take it off the, the good working vehicle. So now to remove it off the good battery, we're going to do the same procedure. Start with the negative terminal, take it off, and we're going to reach in, take the positive off, and take our cables completely out. So remember, when you're doing your jump start, if it doesn't work the first time, you want to recheck those connections to make sure that they're firmly in place. The next thing to remember is that you're going to need to charge this battery a lot longer than you would a normal jump start to a car. That's because this battery is a lot bigger than the battery that's in your car. So you need to charge it for 15 minutes minimum. So thank you very much for your time and I hope this was helpful. Good luck.